members of the Challenger Board, and all the participants worldwide. This year, it's a great honor to present the Arthur C. Clarke Award for Innovation in Education to the SCOBY Education Center at San Antonio College, especially for their Artemis Academy for Girls program and to Rick Varner, its director. This program has been recognized for its innovative connection to the NASA Artemis Lunar Exploration Program. The Artemis Academy has a special focus on girls, an underrepresented group in STEM education. It provides specific problem-solving challenges directed to girls seeking to learn about science, technology, and space systems. It has many local partners that enriches the program. I hope this creative program is replicated at other sites. Some people know Arthur C. Clarke from his science fiction writing and the film 2001, A Space Odyssey, that became a Oscar-winning movie. Some other people know him for having conceived of the geosynchronous communication satellite. Others know him for his research related to studies of the oceans, energy, and rocket systems. During his career, he wrote over 100 books on all of these subjects. Yet others know him for him being perhaps the world's best futurist who made accurate and amazing predictions regarding the internet, self-driving and flying cars, both now being tested, telecities and telework that the COVID-19 pandemic has now made a world reality. Arthur C. Clarke always said, it's easier to transport ideas than people. Arthur made dozens of amazing forecasts and many are yet to be realized. He devoted much of his research and thinking to the oceans. He loved scuba diving. He was intrigued with entirely new ways of doing things And that's why I think he would be particularly uh, approving of this award going to the Innovative Artemis Academy at the San Antonio College in San Antonio, Texas. Most people know of Arthur C. Clarke as an icon of science fiction and a matter, master of prediction. It was my great opportunity to know him and his wonderful humanity. He had great aspirations for our future, but he also had a fun side as well. I had the unique pleasure to know Arthur as a scuba diver enthusiast and a champion table tennis player in Sri Lanka. Arthur, who when not scuba diving, used to practice against a robot that fired deadly serves at 70 miles an hour. The best I ever did against Arthur was seven to 21 when I considered myself reasonably proficient at the game. This was uh, at least 30 years ago. I will be uh, closing to uh, cite Arthur's three laws that show his whimsical nature as well as his profound grasp of the future yet to be. Law number one, when he was a distinguished, when a distinguished and elderly scientist states that something's possible, he's almost certainly right. When he states something is impossible, he is very probably wrong. Law number two, the only way to discover the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. And law number three, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I hope this Clark Award will help to inspire the leadership and the staff, as well as the students of the Challenger uh, Learning Center, and uh, it will move it to new levels of excellence. So to Dr. Lance Bush, president of the foundation and to Rick Farner and all the instructors and volunteers at the SCOBY Educational Center at San Antonio College, 
I would like to say congratulations for a job very well done. We will like to recognize you and your center with a certificate and a cash award. The check is in the mail. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, so that was obviously a lovely me message from Joe Pelton, and we congratulate the um, SCOBY Education Center at San Antonio College. Um, I want to give them an opportunity to say a few words. So Rick and team, um, you guys are welcome to unmute and, and say a few words now. Certainly. Um, we are certainly honored to be recognized with this award uh, for the Artemis Academy for Girls. <clears throat> if you remember the last time we, we met in the real world, um, we brought this up with the discussion with the then uh, Deputy Director Brinstein and it said that we were going to have a, a summer, a week-long summer camp program for girls and we were calling it the Artemis Academy because that was right about the time that they had released the name of what the mission to the moon would be. Um, at that time, you know, looking back as we were joyously surrounding each other in, in Virginia, no one could have predicted the shroud of the pandemic would have draped over everything that we do. So um, I guess there's a twist to that well-known adage that would apply here. And adversity is the mother of innovation. And I, I think the pandemic qualifies as severe adversity. Um, SCOBY has been really dedicated to closing the, the gender gap in STEM fields. And that's particularly noticed here in the San Antonio and Texas region. And so in doing that, using the adage that I mentioned, um, we're trying to create more innovative mothers, if you would. And to do that, you got to start with the daughters. And so we, I think with programs like this and our SCOBY STEM Summit, um, we're hoping to create inspired and empowered young ladies that persist over those hurdles that, you know, if they're, if they're pursuing STEM careers that they'll be presented with. Um, the program started as a week-long summer program, and um, we planned it to actually be in person. And then, if, you know, it's like at this time on this day, this is going to be an in-person program. And then at some point in November, Heather and Selena came to me and they said, you know, it may not work out that way. So what do you think about? And then I mentioned before the brainstorming, you know, things sticking to the wall like spaghetti. Um, they created this virtual program that I described when we did challenger chat. And the, um, the program ended up meeting with these girls every, every Thursday, virtually. And, um, and they, they did that for six months and they had uh, a real focus on developing the girls' STEM identities and their expeditionary skills, which are really what challenger missions are all about. Um, and, you know, we, we really um, inspired the girls to come back and where a lot of the virtual programs were having these terrible low attendance numbers, the, the, the attendance of these girls was like 97%. Of course, they were meeting with Sandra Magnus and Wendy Lawrence, and we had these amazing speakers from Asta Femina that, um, that we were introduced to by Ginger Barnes. Um, so I think while we're looking back and we're celebrating what we accomplished with this really cool program, uh, what we really are doing, doing is embracing the future and the, um, the cohort of girls that we're inspiring to, uh, to move forward and influence their peers and hopefully kind of change our community here in San Antonio. So again, we're really happy to to be recognized for innovating when all of y'all, that's a Southern term, all of y'all are innovating in these really unusual pandemic times.